Open chest. You got some Fidu spawn cards. Gotta hatch them all. Is advice you should follow if you want way too many Fidu spawn crawling around. For safety reasons, the manufacturer recommends that you only hatch some. Talk to Rufio. Sup, Nitrum? Oh, hey, doll. You're gone a crazy long time. Good to have you back, though. Yo, that bomb stunt you pulled was some crazy shit. Thought you were hatching a sweet fittest one with that thing, to be honest. Wasn't no thing. Don't sell yourself short. I don't think I could have done that. You're pretty gangster, Patience. Yeah, I know. Hey, let's stop talking about how bad bass I am a minute and talk about you. Wanna ax you things. Shoot, doll. Those wings. You was hatched with them, right? Or I guess pupated them when you hit puberty? Ha, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm a mutant. Uh, don't tell Concrete I said that. He's my boy, but you know how he's not down with lingo like that? Lingo like, you know, regular words. Don't even say it. He will, like, teleport into our conversation with ghost magic just to shush you. Yeah, he does that to you too, huh? That's some crazy shit. Okay, so you always had wings then. Then I guess you aren't secretly a god tier, or... Nah, might have been cool to go full on rogue. Hey, maybe you could have given me, like, stealing pointers. What, as a thief and all? But nah, I don't think I could have gone through with that. Not intentionally, I mean. What? Why not? I don't know. Killing yourself? That's... That's a heavy thing to do. I'm not like you, Mina. I don't think anyone is. Well, maybe Damara is, kinda. But maybe we shouldn't go into that. <laughs> Let Unhatch fit us one lie, you know? What I'm saying is, you got game. And I can dig that. But I was never as brave as people always thought. I don't know why they always thought that about me. Maybe it's my wings, or my mohawk, or when I shout bangering sometimes real loud. It makes it seem like I'm the shit, with big self-esteem. But my self-esteem is nothing really to crow about. I don't know. Alright, so you never god-tiered, but I still don't get something. Didn't you have a totally fucking stupid robot body at some point, or did I just imagine that? That whole period of time in our session was real foggy to me, I guess, because I was dead for a while there. Maybe I got ghost madness, I could swear you was a metal horse, though. Yeah. No, the robot body was definitely a thing. I kind of blocked that out of my memory, too. <laughs> that was... That shit was something else, yo. Crazy. I'm sure you remember how all that started. Back when Damar and I were still dating, Ring any bells? Yeah. Fucking Megiddo. Do we really need to rehash that ancient bullshit drama? Bull. Lull. Wait. Why don't you ever do bull puns? Fail? No, no, no. <laughs> Just saying is all. It was that whole thing. Anyway, that's when Horace was kind of macking on me. Remember? And I wasn't all about to vacillate with him and her because I know how she was. Damn, so jealous, so fucking crazy. So she made me a cripple, remember? Tag that shit, homie. Abalonism. Damn, yeah. I mean, she busted me up. Couldn't move a muscle. Well, could still flap my wings well enough. <laughs> really, I thought it'd be all right, just flapping wings around. I could still fly and just hang there limp. Might have been a dope look. But nah, Horace thought better of it. Built me the Robobod, which is pretty tight. Like, literally. Screwed that shit together tight. Dude is good. Lost my wings, which kinda sucked. And kind of awkward just having a real guy's head on top of a big metal body and making all those damn legs move the right way, you know? Trotting is hard work, y'all. Especially on stairs. Better than being a cripple, though. I mean, quadriplegic. Oops. <laughs> but I guess you didn't know what happened after that, since you and Damar were killing each other and all. No, what? Well, I died. Yeah, but that's like, wow, long story. Guess you never heard. I'll tell you some other time. It's this whole crazy thing. But I was dead, right? And Horace kissed me back to life. 
but just my head, I think. He was probably standing on top of some mountain striking a pose like a fucking gangster. Probably fighting a hoof beast with a flaming mane and all. Hope someone painted that shit. Instant masterpiece. So yeah, next you saw me, I had my normal body again. It was cool of him to help me all the ways he has. And yeah, we went out, me and him, for a long time after that, kind of off and on, even after we died. In case you were going to ask. I wasn't. Right. <laughs> Too much information, I guess. Sorry, doll. I always want to thank you for standing up for me. You know, when she crippled me, even though it cost you. That was pure class, Pexies. I'll never forget it. Man, I wouldn't have had to if you could just stand up for yourself sometimes. I mean, being paralyzed, not fish standing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're the only guy in our group who has ever been close to being pretty cool. Everyone else sucks, but you were almost alright. You were always such a pushover, though. Pretty lame, bro. Trigger warning, cripple entendre. Suck it. Excuse me, Mina. Lame is an ableist slur, which in this context is really inappropriate. Tagging your jokes with ironic trigger warnings really does not excuse the behavior. I'll thank you to refrain from using such terms in the future. Also, when walking, be careful not to flaunt the health of your legs. Uh... Ask Rufio to join. I probably shouldn't even ask this since you're not as brave as people make out with you to be. I mean, make you out to be. Wait, what did I say? Never mind. But would you want to come away with me to... Whoa, man. Not you too. <laughs> what? It's fine. It's right that you dig me. I'm flattered. You were just the last person who hadn't hit on me yet. And I kind of dug it about you, you know? I wasn't asking you out, dope. Oh, wow. Shit. Sorry. Guess I got the wrong idea. It's just kind of a reflex, doll, you know? Everybody hits on me all the time, and I don't know why. Shit is crazy. Just the other day, get this, some orange guy in a green shirt jumped out of some bushes and tried to kiss me. And I'm like, what? Step off, jolly man. <laughs> Maybe it's cause you're a beachy ass glubberfucker with a kick and hawk. Yo, that's cool of you to say. You've kinda got this Otemba Bishhojo thing going on yourself, girl. Your style rocks. I always thought you looked pretty slamming. I can give you mohawk dyeing tips. You'd rock the shit out of this look. For what it's worth, I would be your moe dere dere waifu in a beat of a pump biscuit if I was remotely attracted to you or found your personality more appealing. And also if I shared your dumb passion for troll anime and didn't think it clogged massive blowhole. <laughs> Bangarang! That's a scenario I'd be alright with. No one really to talk to anymore about my story, Joe. Since things got so chilly with my ex. Goddamn witch. Seriously, she crazy. So, what are we gonna ask me? Uh, if not on a date, and if not what brand of mohawk dye I use? Never mind. You're not even gonna agree anyway, cause this team sucks. Later, Roof. Be Rufio. Oh shit! You wanna be me? Okay, that's pretty dope, I guess. But can it wait? My Lessus is missing again, and I can't think straight without him. He's my happy thought! <laughs> I hope Damar didn't do something with him. She likes to fuck with me sometimes by stashing the little guy somewhere. She's bonkers! Examine plush. It's a happy looking host plush. It won't be so happy anymore if you hatch a fighty spawn egg near it. Maybe you'll be able to find some eggs in this area if you keep searching. Then the real fun can begin. You start humming the fighty spawn theme song. Open chest. You got a busted robot head! There was a rumor going around that once, through an elaborate courtship process, Horace sent Rufio a robotic duplicate of himself to spar with piece by piece. The last part he sent was supposedly the head. That's almost certainly a myth. Horace is a pretty strange dude, but he would have to be a total lunatic to do something like that. The anecdote strains plausibility. 
Open chest. You got a pair of Dutton bubble goggles. You can see into infinity for eternity. Just the way Charles Dutton would have wanted it. It's my tuna! Aw, looks like he's all tuckered out under the brain tree. Falling is hard work. Try to open chest. This chest appears to have an extremely complicated lock. There's no way you can open it. You'll need to find someone who's handy with gadgets. Talk to Horace. Your harness. Uh, I mean, heinous. Uh, highness, I mean. Oh, fiddlesticks. Uh, please, pardon my utterly execrable language and unforgivable stammering, your hoarseness. Uh, shoot! I mean, uh, heinous. Uh, I am a bale of nerves in your royal presence, and it has been so long. And when I am so spooked, you must know how that causes me to even more firmly identify with the majestic hoof beast. Hey, uh, Horace, what? What the fuck is that thing you're prefixing all you're talking with? Oh, this? What, you don't recognize it? No, and it's weirding me out. Why, it's my smiling face. You silly, utterly superior person, you. Goggles and all. Can't you see? I guess? It's disturbing as heck to me for whatever reason. Oh, the last thing I desire is to disconcert our prodigal empress. I just thought I would try smiling permanently and uncompromisingly, rather than resnorting to all of those disgruntled expressions I usually trot out. I've been cutting back on the horse buttons, too, as you can see. Why the F would you want to do that? It was on Yulin's suggestion, actually. <laughs> huh? Oh, I guess you must not have heard. She and I have developed quite a strong and stable Moira Legions recently. Dang. Disclaimer, less impressed than I sound. That matchup makes no glubbin' sense, dude. Cats and horses for the win. Exactly. Who would have thought? If you asked me before we all died whether I would consider romantically pairing with the ridiculous midblood, let alone Miss Lee Jean of all people, I probably would have died regardless, due to laughter and distic asphyxiation. Oh, if you're going to go, go with a smile. <laughs> but you know what it was that finally cleared the sweat, steam-induced fog from my goggles? It was meeting our post-scratch counterparts. Dancesters. Or, shall I say, dressage sisters. Seeing our corresponding young Alternians, why it threatened to produce a tear-induced flood on the inside of my goggles, which naturally I would have drained right away due to the custom sweat valves. Their relationship, in spite of the strong class disparity, I found to be... So moving, so pure, it made me reconsider my perspective on Mulin's entirety, who hoarsenessly I'd hardly ever give a second thought. It's funny, don't you think, how our young ancestors took to a completely different social configuration, making for some rather odd pairings, both platonic and otherwise. A whole host of counterintuitive minglings up and down the Hema spectrum with no regard for class compatibility. And yet, it all seems to make a strange amount of sense. Nay, I might go as far as saying, it's all oddly, rather, titillating? Or, no, perhaps what I mean is, some of their alternian indiscretions feel a bit, I don't know, naughty? Oh, phooey, that's not what I mean either. Pardon my potty mouth. Now you'll probably mistake me for some kind of rascally deviant. My mouth is quite the load gaper today. Man, why y'all still act like you give a heap of manure about dating down the spectrum? You and Nitra been a thing for how long now? Yes, but no one was supposed to know about that. That was always supposed to be my own private, uh, 
Uh, exploration. I had no intention of creating such a stirrup, though I have literally smithed such items before, pun notwithstanding. It was only to be a very private, fleeting dalliance with Bowie, but the whole thing became so quickly scandalized. A spur-of-the-moment affair, really. And soon others were whisked into it, such as you and the vengeful Rustblood. And, well, imagine my embarrassment. Now, trust me, the last thing I wanted was for royalty such as yourself to know I was pursuing forbidden blood to be caught with my hoof in the chocolate jar, so to nicker. Ow! And I suppose I would have clapped my hands of the matter after the big kerfuffle, but I guess I didn't expect to fall in love. It's true. I am not ashamed to say it. I fell mane over hooves, phantom snout over phantom hindquarters. He... he stole my breath away with but a roguish glance. Wow, life story alert. Do not care. Oh, my apologies, Your Excellency. Just tell me why paling up with Mew means you have to make that terrible face now? She taught me to get in touch with my anger. Through a moderately discernible series of enthusiastic mimes, she has made it clear that it is much healthier to crush all negative emotions beneath a stampede of positivity, and to always be cheerful and upbeat, no matter what even if projecting that facade is, at times, physically painful. Such as, all times. That is some shit sauce advice, and you should give it up, Holmes. Um, yes. Very well. <sighs> is this better? Much. Ask Horace to join. Respectfully, your superlative magnificence. I do not think that would be advisable. Whoa, shocker of the century. Horse pun, this girl on fire. Of course, I will if you order me to without hesitation. But lately I've been attempting to canter down a trail of nonviolence. I've been saddled for so long with anger and hostility, and now my focus is on solving problems in ways that do not involve confrontation or physical strength. Soon, I may even be able to say, STRENGTH! Without shouting. Technology can solve so many problems. For instance, do you have any idea how much energy is stored in sweat, which may be released through its steam? Have you any clue as to the MIGHT of a quadrupedal automation, powered by raging currents of steam, coursing through its exquisite horizontal torso, and finally jetting out through a perfect pair of metal nostrils? I could build as many as you like, my empress. Um, no. Thinking I will pass on taking an army of snorting horse bots with me. Unless you build those suckers out of gold. So that's all you do is build stupid shit that runs on your sweat now? Cause I could easily use a guy with muscle. I don't know if you've seen this skull dude, but he is ripped. Kinda hot, actually. Oh no, that's far from my own preoccupation. I have also taken up some time to perfect the art of humor. Would you like to hear a joke? Oh noes. Fine. A horse trots into a thirst shanty, his muscular shoulders slouched, his noble head hanging low. The dairy jerk observes that the great beast is clearly despondent, and asks, <laughs> Why the long face? Uh... Zaha, God damn it! I am royally ordering you to stop doing that face. Forever. At once, my lady. My formerly perky visage withdraws, while my fully erect posture shrivels at your regal disapproval. I shall henceforth emote in my customary manner as such. Respect. Be horse. Bring me a horse, and I am yours forever.
Open chest. You got some more boon dollars! A little while ago, you would have been pumped to score this dough, but now this is just pocket change to you. You sneer with contempt at the pitiable sum of money and let it slip through your fingers to the forest below. Let the beggars and peasants scrounge for it, you say. Examine Bubbles This bubble contains Damora's memory of a huge quartz obstacle. Only she can remove it. Stinking witch. She never makes it easy, does she? Talk to Demera. So, Megiddo. Here we are again. I guess. Hmm. Please tell me this reunion is as awkward for you as it is for me. Mm. Not saying nothing, huh? Just going to stand there and leave me wriggling on a hook during this frosty silence. Come on, you nutty bitch, at least do something to break the ice! Huh. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you didn't by any chance kidnap Nitrum's Lucis, did you? Or steal all his dorky Fidu spawn loot? I thought we were past this. Don't tell me you're still tormenting the guy even after eternity. Do what to myself twice with a double what exactly? God damn, your weird accent is thick as ever. あなたは、あなたの言葉で私を退屈続けるのだろうか。またはあなたは私の服を脱ぐのだろうか。私はあなたの歯の間に私の乳首を感じるようにしたい。What? Did you just tell me to bite something or Screw it. I give up. Language barrier be a fucking mother glubber. Ask Demera to join. Hey, so guess what? I'm building an army to kill Lord... <laughs> Shale! Oh, Shale, a.k.a. C. <laughs> well, you could give a fuck about saving reality and or wouldn't just be a huge backstabbing liability out there. But just for shits and cuddles, uh, been sort of wondering, back when we were like, kind of ruining each other's shit, because of that whole cycle of revenge deal, and I ended up dying and god tearing and all. Remember that? I, not sure I followed that, but I'll assume it was more weird skanky sass. But what I want to know is, after the fight, did I hurt you bad enough that you maybe crawled off and died somewhere? Like in a quest cocoon? Mm hmm. Were you maybe all bloodied up from all the forkins? And then maybe along comes a friend with a maddening inability to hold a grudge against you for a ways you fucked him over? Maybe trotting along in his new robo-horse body and swooped your bloody torso up on his back, galloped off to your cocoon and dragged you on a slab while probably not having the nerve to finish you off? This ringing any bells? Like the ones in your daddy-ass fuck goddamn belfry? Seiko, what are you talking I'm asking if you are a god tier, you inscrutable fish wife. Holy mackerel, getting info out of you is like prying a pearl from a slutty murderous clam. Hamakuri wa shinjo seisei shimasen. Anta wa umi no nani mo shiranai. Yeah, I know clams don't make pearls. Look, I just misspoke. It was a hasty burn, okay? Don't be calling out my authority on the ocean, d -Meg. You know I got all watery junk on lock. Who 
you think you trying to rile up with that amateur noise? あなたは非常に横でいるように見える。最後はチールアウト。のはお互いに触れてみましょう。私と一緒にどうせ入手してください。Oh my god, I can't understand you. Chill out and do what with you? I'm going to ask again as simple as I can. Megiddo, are you a magic immortal time fairy witch with secret butterfly wings? Yes or no? Damara. If Horrible Conversations was a video game, you would truly be last boss. Now where the fuck's Arania and her little windbag stand? Let's just get this jam over with already. Be Demera. あなたは私には私を成功することができないばい。Um, yeah, no idea what you said. Guess someone who speaks your gibberish needs to ask. Try to open gray chest. What's that sound? You listen closely to the chest. You hear something flapping around in there. This thing looks airtight. Whatever's in there might run out of ghost oxygen soon. Alas, this chest appears to have an extremely complicated lock. There's no way you can open it. You'll need to find someone who's handy with gadgets. Open chest. You got some fighty spawn eggs. You can go use one of these on the host plush back there. It honestly sounds like a childish waste of time, but little do you know that fighty spawn's key demographic is your age group. You are the sucker fish. It's you. Use fight a spawn egg on host plush. Examine horse. What an utterly magnificent specimen. But if you train horse pony hard enough, one day he may become horse aroni. By which I mean he will grow slightly bigger and gain no measurable advantages in combat. You will, however, be required to feed him more. Take horse a pony. Give horse to horse. <gasps> you did it! You brought me a fine young stallion. Whoa, what a beautiful gesture of friendship. I am so fudging happy. You have no idea. Oh, whoops. Uh, so happy. Oh, I have become loose with foul language. And forgot I wasn't supposed to make that face anymore. You are, of course, free to be me whenever you wish, my lady. Be Horace? Yes. Examine Horace. Dear, sweet, beautiful, dear, precious, sweet, sweet, dear, sweet horse pony. Nay. Talk to Mina. Hosack, serious question. Yes, my peerless exalted eminency. When did you decide you were a horse? Hold up there, Mina. The question you just asked was in fact a severe microaggression against those who are stricken with deeply plighted feelings of species dysphoria. Your question was innocent enough, so I'm not going to go down the perilous road of trigger shaming. But Mina, my goodness. What you just said was catastrophically triggering. Poor Horace here will likely feel triggered for weeks because of your thoughtless question. Hell, even I'm feeling a little triggered by it, and I'm not even under the impression I'm a horse. I think everyone in earshot was triggered by that. You feel triggered, right, Horace? <sighs> Trigger sounds like a wonderful name for a hoof beast. See? Totally triggered. Now let's let the healing begin. Ugh. So done. Mina. His belief that he is actually a majestic hoof beast is not characterized by choice. In fact, it is not even a belief. It is a fact 
which we must strive to respect is factual, in no small part due to his hyper-important feelings about it. Tailoring factual reality around people's critical feelings is a cornerstone of problematics, and failure to do so can only result in the release of devastating payloads of correctional words deployed to educate, heal, and rhetorically overwhelm. When you asked him when did you decide to become a horse, you implied that he made a choice to craft this feature of his identity, as opposed to listening carefully to the fauna within, heeding the call of the long ghostly snout his body tragically denied him, whilst feeling the subtle tingling of his phantom horsey posterior. So true, friend. Your wisdom truly transcends your degenerate, mildly nauseating mutant blood. Thank you. Now, you know I hate to derail conversations, but I think this occasion calls for a thorough, unrelenting education on the topic. And now I shall begin my crushing harangue on this delicate subject, as thusly. Blah 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 Open gray chest. You got a priceless work of fine art. You spend a few moments solemnly contemplating the artistic merits of the splendid classical sculpture. Wait, no. Hang on, don't move. The pixelation is missing its mark. Damn, it's still not quite right. Okay, hold your horses. Perfect! Whew, crisis averted. That was a close call. You very nearly caught a glimpse of a horse penis and began to cry. Talk to Demara. Oh, hello, Demara. I heard you were having a mechanical issue with your chest over here. Mind if I take a look? あなたは私の胸をいつでも表示することができます。I I think you said yes. Uh, sorry, I really struggled with your coarse low blood accent. 私のおっぱいの上にミルクを注いでください。I didn't quite understand that either. There's something about milk uh served to you in a particular way? Yes, if you would like some milk, I could bring you some later. I'll just need to equip my steam-powered de-strengthening gloves so that I may hand you the glass without shattering it. I really need to finish my universal translation device. So we can have a more coherent conversation. It's just so difficult to get the circuitry to function correctly when one insists on relying on steam power. You want me to bring you what? To what exactly with my what? Hmm, I sure? Do what with your school girl uniform? I wouldn't want to do anything to ruin it. It's quite nice. But perhaps I could craft a robotic avatar for you, illuminating your fashion choices. Actually, if I did that, I could install more sensible speech algorithms so that I could understand you for a change. Um, 
<咳>私の体内に入るまたは私はあなたを破壊するだろう。でもあら、forgive me if I'm leaping to conclusions, but has the nature of your cryptic remarks been leaning, well, a little blue? Be the mirror. あなたは私になりたいですかあなたは私にはできません。あなたは私を理解できない場合さらにあなたは私にはできませんあなたは私を成功することができない場合あ、uh, come again I suppose Rufio should ask he's always been the only one who can parse your vulgar peasant tongue open great chest you got Rufio's lucis The poor little guy is gasping for breath. Who could have locked him in here? Who could be so cruel? You glance at Damaro suspiciously. She doesn't bother to look at you and takes another drag. Talk to Rufio. Hey, man. Oh, <laughs> still making that face, I see. Yes, I really enjoy making this face. It really helps remind me, through persistent facial discomfort, that appearing to be happy should always be one's top priority. Why? You don't find it displeasing, do you? Um. No. It's, uh. Yeah. It's alright, l Horace. The look is really. Uh. Something else. Wow. Really? I could stop making the face. Mina recently ordered me to stop making it in her presence, and I, of course, instantly complied. I would just as readily do the same for someone as important to me as you. Err.、Uh, <laughs> that's cool, but yeah, that's fine. Really, I can dig the look, I guess. Just do whatever you're feeling with it, except for maybe pointing it at me so much. Ah,、oh, Rufio. Your affable malleability continues to be your finest quality. It is the jewel in your mohawk, a true diamond in the rough. You always were the ideal embodiment of your aspect, as pleasantly wayward and fickle as the breeze itself. Yeah, uh, thanks. I should probably try to work on that, though. Of course, we always strive to hone our craft. Ever pounding at the iron to make the shoe a perfect shape. I know well how much work it takes. No, I didn't mean like be more like that. I mean, uh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. My path was similarly governed by my aspect. For the longest time, I felt as if I was a blank sheet of paper, like I had to make myself out of nothing. And so I began to listen closely to the void within myself and corral the various personal attributes I heard calling to me. Much like assembling a complex machine, I began to piece together a strong identity, which of course included discovering a passion for mechanics itself. And needless to say, what also galloped out of the void in my soul was the realization that I am obviously a noble hoofbeast. Though my physical appearance cruelly betrays this fact. Hey, uh, Horace, I think we need to talk. I mean, when you get a minute. And in following sweeps, I would keep turning my mechanically augmented acute equine ears back to the abyss within and continue to discover more about myself. I would learn that I was more complicated than I ever imagined. More complicated than any mortal mind could understand a person to be. Knowing myself to be hoof beast kind was only grazing the surface of the pasture, merely skimming the cream of the top of the milk. I was so much more. I think maybe we should, like, uh, see other. It turns out my body was merely the host to a highly intricate system of entities of any sort you could name. Biological or mechanical, sentient or non sentient, 
physical or metaphysical, my inner field of experience is shared by the souls of ancient legendary muscle beasts. A range of devices, such as hive hold appliances, a number of cosmological features such as planets, star systems, even several universes, and a variety of abstract concepts which sentient beings have not yet formed the language to express. Like, don't get me wrong, we had some good times together. It's been great, really. But maybe it's time to, uh, I don't know. But as much as I learned about myself, I could never find a way to become whole. The void was never filled until you came along, Rufio. Wow, man, that's... wow. If there is any lesson I would like people to take from my story, it is a lesson that is a multiple system consisting of two distinct lessons. The first is how love heals all wounds, even ones consisting of the infinite essence of void permeating your entire existence and role as a legendary hero. The second is how if you are faced with any crisis of identity whatsoever, it's really important to do your best to manufacture esoteric features of your personality and believe in them very strongly and tell people about those things as frequently as possible. I can assure you right now, the labor involved in smithing my personality into one that is interesting and complicated was rather intensive. I really worked up a good sweat in the process. That is the sweat dripping from my face. Hey, yo, that, that's some freaky shit, dog. Anyway, I apologize for talking so much. You know how you have a way of drawing the breath out of people. What were you trying to tell me? Oh, yeah. Uh, never mind. Give Rufio his Lucis. Oh shit, you found him. Thank you so much. I was so worried, but now he's back and so are my happy thoughts. Got all kinds of confidence now. <laughs> you want to be me? My self-esteem can totally accommodate that, yo. Be Rufio? Yes. Talk to Horace. Yo, yo, Horace, my gangster, how you feel? Can I get a way gentle fist bump for my boy? <laughs> yeah, just like that. Fuck yes. Actually, that still kind of hurt. Anyway, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. Something, uh, pretty important. About us, and the future and all that. You got a minute? Okay, cool. So, damn. Where do I even start? You know we have had nothing but good times together. It's been the bomb. Well, maybe not everything. Shit got dicey at the start. With my crazy ex and... Yeah. That's not the point. Remember the way you used to be? Before you all started being interested in me? Man, you thought I sucked. <laughs> Just another low blood not worth your time. You were so pissed at people like me and Damara. So angry, damn. Shit was scary. And Damara, she used to be nice as can be. Don't know what happened there. Talk about a personality switch for both of you. But then for whatever reason, I guess you wanted to reach out to me. I mean, in secret, I know. You didn't want to be all shamed out of your highbrow CIP club. I can always dig that. I understood, you know? So you came to my woods. Never told anybody. We hung out. That meant a lot to me. I want you to know that. People always had crazy ideas about me. Like I was this brave adventure guy all up in this forest being a badass and shit. People like, they always wanted to be with me or maybe even wanted to be me. It was all kind of whack. Even tomorrow when we were going out didn't really get me, I think. She put me on this pedestal. I mean, back before she snapped. But you saw me for who I was, which was not a perfect guy. Like, I wasn't really sure about myself. And you saw that. So you actually helped me. When we were in the woods together, you taught me to fight. Taught me to fly. Taught me to crow. Well, not literally. I mean, I knew how to do those things. I knew technically how to flap my wings and fly through the air. I knew how to say bang ring all loud if I really wanted to. But that was the thing. I was scared. I was scared of flying and falling. 
I was scared of fighting and failing. And I was scared of crowing and sounding like a fucking idiot, I guess. LOL. But you helped me not be so scared or self-conscious, maybe. You just helped me be myself. Like, to just be okay with not being perfect or living up to whatever people think I should be. Maybe it's just nostalgia. There's something better about those times. Just you and me chilling in the woods. But then we entered the game. And for some reason, still don't know why, Damar just started going a little more nuts every day. Getting more and more jealous when she knew we were hanging out. Then she found out it was more than just hanging out. And I guess the rest was history. And yada yada, then we all died. We've been together ever since. All this time's ghosts. Which is a long time, you know? And I'll always be grateful for what we had together. But I guess people change. Even as ghosts, they change. If you give them long enough, they start wanting different things. Oh man, I'm going about this all wrong. Saying way too much, but not saying what I want to say. Shit. <laughs> I should just use the bravery you helped me understand I always had. And just say it. I think we should break up. Uh, you okay, bro? Oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? My ear valves filled up with sweat, and I didn't catch most of that. Hey, why don't we participate in an enjoyable activity together later, as romantic afterlife partners? We could play one of those foreign card games you seem to like. What's that one called again? Uh, Fiddle Spoon? Um, yeah, we could do that, I guess. That sounds, uh, dope. I know I'm not the best partner to share your exotic and somewhat childish interest with, but I do my best to try to understand them and enjoy them with you. The most important thing is that we spend time together and maintain a strong relationship. bang a -ring. Talk to Mina. Damn. Thank God I got my lessons back. Don't know what I'd do without the little guy. Is he even, uh, real? You know, like the ghost of your actual Lucis, or? Uh, you know what? Not sure, doll. He could just be a memory figment or something like that. Or maybe he's really his ghost. When Damaro accidentally jumped a hunger trunk on him way back, crushed his little body, I always dreamt I might meet up with him again in the afterlife. So when I found him here, guess I didn't think about it much. I was just happy to see him. He is my happy thought after all. I can't really bring myself to do much without him. Like fly, fight, crow, you know, the basics. Truth. I remember when I was young, just a little run out there trying to make it in the world. People would look at me funny because my wings were growing in, and that really freaked me out, yo. So I got way self-conscious and didn't feel at home out there. Would everyone eyeing me up like that? So one night, my lessons led me into the woods. And I found this whole baller village of fucking tree houses and rope ladders and I was like, damn! Shouted bangerang so loud, you don't even know! That's when I became an official member of the Lost Weeaboos. Hey, okay, so... Can we not actually talk about the Lost Weeaboos? Can that just not be a conversation we have? Uh... Roof, listen, your story's cool, but there's some junk that's just so silly I can't even try to abide. Yeah, I guess. Huh. But anyway, there are my boys. A better posse you couldn't hope to chill with. Kick the shit on troll anime. All that. Oh, for club's sake. No. First bumped into Damar out there. Crazy times. I think those were the formative sweeps for me. Learned to love a lot of things I still do to this day. Between you and me, I miss the days I could just jam with her about troll anime. But now, you know how it is. Okay, why do you stinking nerds insist on calling it troll anime? I gotta ask. Don't you realize prefacing anything with troll inside the context of troll culture is redundant as fuck? Why don't you just call them cartoons? Yeah, 
I dig that. Never thought about that. Huh. Deep. It's okay. I get that the stuff that I like isn't for everyone. People say it's just for wigglers. And I kind of assumed that one day I'd grow out of it. But I guess I never did. Then again, we all died. And now we really are all young forever. Just like the prophecy of the lost Weeaboo said. Whoa, spooky. I always thought that was a load of BS. Whoops, you just said lost Weeaboos again, thus failing the conversation. In the immortal hand jester words of the late great Mulan Lejean, I'm so done. Talk to Demera. Hey, doll. Don't suppose you had anything to do with the recent disappearance of my lusses, did you? Yeah, sure. Like I believe that. Like I'm not so onto your tricks by now. So, No, not yet. I tried, but I just couldn't do it. It's hard, you know? あなたはどういう意味ですかそれは恋人があんたを裏切った時に感じるはい、私はしている。Damn, so cold, girl. Why can't you just let the past go? Anyway, once I actually do get up the nerve to break it to him, don't be thinking this is your big chance with me. It's over between us for good. Kind of for obvious reasons. So just friends. You dig? <laughs> yeah, I figured you'd be like that. Anyway, Mina kind of needs to keep going through this bubble. I know you like to make shit difficult for everyone all the time, but... You think you can get rid of the big-ass iceberg thing you dropped there? Yeah, ha Aw, come on. Do it for me, Damara. Bakin. Sikas. Anata wa watashi ni gari ga aru. Seiteki na setai. Wow. All right, uh. Maybe. Just go. Be Damara. Remove Quartz Glacier. Examine door. Wait, there's something different about this door. You think it might be a real door? It's not someone's memory like the rest of this place is. The meteor must be physically passing through the dream bubble again. You'd love to get in here and snoop around somehow, but the door is password protected. There's got to be someone around here who knows the password. Eavesdrop. Demara, do you mind? We're having a private conversation here. Please, leave us alone. We'll talk later, okay? Uh, she's making me slightly uncomfortable. That's her specialty. Just ignore her until she goes away. Talk to Rufio. Gotta be honest, Damara. I've been feeling pretty bad. Why is Um... You can keep a secret, right? Yes, of course. I'm a friend of yours. Yeah, it's Horace. And you know, I've been thinking about breaking it off with him. What do you want to do? No, that wouldn't do much good. I mean, I feel like a chump for even thinking about it. He's been so cool. But damn, eternity's a long fucking time. I don't even know if a relationship should really last that long. Whoa, uh, kind of personal question. Anyway, that's not it. I feel guilty for saying so. 
I'm just not into it. So many repetitive dates over the millennia. So much like talking about livestock and big muscular animals and I don't know. Those aren't really my interests. Maybe we were never that compatible and I just never had the guts to say so. Rufio, I was going to say this thing a I know, I know. I didn't listen to you. I figured you were still all mad and jealous. I was a kid. Right. I just don't know what to do. He's great, but he's so clingy. I don't know how he keeps it up after all this time. Dude's got stamina. I'm just like, romantically exhausted. You get me, doll? Yes. I Hey, touche. But for real. I just don't want to hurt his feelings. No! God, no. Don't hurt anyone. Let's not go there again. I guess if the two of you are like, um, that's really between you and him. I'm not sure if you'd go for that. I don't think that would actually help me. Man, no! I told you, please don't feed anyone soul to anybody! You've got to keep crazy talk like that down, Damara. If people knew some of the shit you said, how you say crazy shit like you want to serve them, fuck. It wouldn't be cool. People would flip. Hell, didn't you hear Mina was trying to raise an army to kill him? If she could hear some of the things you told me, shit. I can't ever let her find out. If she knew, you'd both start fighting again. Anata wa... Talk to Horace. Excuse me? Oh, I see you've taken an interest in this fine, I'll bet diminutive steed given to me as a gift earlier. Isn't it wonderful? I shall feed it many an apple, and it will grow to be strong. I don't... do what with your horns? Ride what now? No buckets will make it to go to the Kimas. You want me to... Uh, something about... hay? <laughs> you would like me to perform... what? Rhythmic behavior, exactly? Uh, while making which animal noise? Do what with... wait, all of you? Wouldn't that be quite a lot of Damaras? Regardless of the activity you are trying to describe? 
清潔なタオルで私を包んでください。私は脳中の動物のようにうめき声をしなければならない。私の足の間に腹立たしそうに鼻を鳴らす。私は殺された子羊のように悲鳴を上げるでしょう。私たちは一緒に私たちの尻を持ってみましょう。共通のオーカズムに参加。すべての終わりでは。私たちを取り囲んでいる。ああ、trying to decode your speech is quite agitating, you know. Whenever I talk to you, my system gets a little switchy. I begin to faintly channel a soul from alternate Asia, and I come very close to understanding you. But then it vanishes just as quickly, and my host vessel is left with. Nothing but an overwhelming experience of perspiration. Not that I would expect a lowly rust blooded singleton like you to understand. Mata, what does your take us as it is? What does you a hunt or so can eat it? Freak. Talk to Mina. あなたは時間の漁師に挑戦します。あなたの終われな軍隊は失敗しなければならない。彼はあなたの幽霊を食べるようになる。彼は現実そのものを消費するからである。I think it sounded like you're trying to wish me luck in my upcoming battle. Hey. Thanks, Megiddo. Maybe I had you all wrong. No, Anta was so sinakata. Oh, I've probably been a bitch to you for no reason. Let's forget all that shit ever happened. How about a hug? Whoa, watch where you put in that hand. What does she want? Nani wo kokai wa arimasen. Apology accepted. Hey, you get around to moving that huge quartz glacier yet? Kind of in a hurry here. Be Mina. Open chest. You got an east before and scroll. It is covered in mysterious runes. If only there were some way for laypersons to translate this absurd gibberish. Tinyurl.com slash Demerel Megiddo. Hey, Dams! If you go anywhere near him, I will fucking kill you! <laughs>